Today, the NHL is completely changing. We're going to have ourselves a 32-team bracket, and the first team to score wins. But the first thing we got to do is figure out the seedings for these teams, so I'm going to go ahead and simulate through the regular season and see where every team places. Wrapping up the season simulation, we're going to have the New Jersey Devils first in the entire league, followed by Vegas, Carolina, Tampa, Colorado, and then the St. Louis Blues sixth. So here's the seedings for all these teams. We're going to go ahead and put them on the bracket, and let's get right into these matchups. And with our first matchup, of course, we have the one seed taking on the 32nd, and that's going to be the New Jersey Devils taking on the Anaheim Ducks. So I think it really goes without saying that most of the goals we're going to be seeing in this video are going to be happening in the first period. But John Gibson, bro, what are you doing here? You literally slid out of the way for Holtz to score that goal. That might be the easiest goal he's ever going to score in his career. So on top of the New Jersey Devils eliminating the Anaheim Ducks, they're also going to be claiming Trevor Zegers away from the Anaheim Ducks, seeing as he is the highest overall player. I mean, technically they could have also taken Troy Terry because he is an 87 overall, but I mean, at the end of the day, an 87 is an 87, and in a simulation like this, it's not going to make much of a difference whether it's Troy Terry or Trevor Zegers. Heading right into our next matchup, this could really go either way as we have the Detroit Red Wings taking on the Seattle Kraken. Then again, it is whatever team scores the first goal, so every single matchup could go either way. In the last matchup, I said that most of the goals should be scored during in the first period, but that doesn't mean all of them. Thankfully, Matty Beniers is going to be able to score this one before it ends up going to overtime because, yeah, we're in the third period somehow and no team has scored a goal. So, shout out to Matty Beniers for ending this one. With the help of Matty Beniers picking up the lone goal of the game, it looks like Dylan Larkin is going to be taking his talents to the Seattle Kraken. But, Detroit, there is one thing you can celebrate. You're still ahead of stick on the ice when it comes to YouTube subscribers. We're going to try to change that right now. So, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Moving right into our next matchup, that's going to feature the Ottawa Senators and the Buffalo Sabres. So, after an incredibly long Seattle and Detroit game. I needed a type of game like this where it's just going to end real quick and Rasmus Dahlin, he's going to be the guy burying this goal here. A nice snipe over the shoulder of Corpusello and Buffalo's taking this one. Now, but real talk, shout out to Rasmus Dahlin for ending this game early. After that Detroit and Seattle one, I started reconsidering this video because I sat here for like 15 minutes before somebody finally scored a goal. But in saying that, Buffalo's won this game and it looks like they're going to be adding Tim Stutzel, 89 overall. But there's no point looking to the past matchups because we have a ton in front of us and the next one's going to be the Boston Bruins taking on the Winnipeg Jets and yes in that season simulation the Boston Bruins finished 25th in the entire league. We'll just process that for a second here. I was hyping up the Boston Bruins a little bit here even though they finished 25th in the season simulation but the one thing that you can never count out that's the Winnipeg Jets in NHL games because this team's constantly elite and it looks like they're giving Ehlers too much space so he's going to bury the winner and Boston's eliminated. So beating the Boston Bruins is going to be massive for the Winnipeg Jets because that means they're going to be adding David Pasternak to the team and if you're trying to score first in the game it's pretty good to have this guy on your team. Team. Heading right into our next matchup, I know I said that it really shouldn't be favorites because it is first to score, but we got the Colorado Avalanche taking on the Philadelphia Flyers. I'm taking Colorado any day of the week, even when it comes to scoring the first goal. Now I'm going to give Philly some props for staying in this game for as long as they have, but it was only a matter of time before Colorado found the back of the net, and the man that's going to be picking up the goal is going to be Ross Colton. It looks like the Colorado Avalanche are going to be picking up some more offensive firepowers. They're now adding Sean Couturier to the team at 86 overall. Now technically, Carter Hart is the highest overall here at an 87, but teams aren't allowed to add goaltenders yet. Once we get into the later rounds of the bracket, then goaltenders will be up for grabs. Now this next matchup has the potential to have a hilarious ending. We have the Chicago Blackhawks taking on the Toronto Maple Leafs. There is a clear favorite here. And obviously that's the Chicago Blackhawks because the Toronto Maple Leafs, they're just not clutch. With five minutes left in the first period, Chicago's got the puck in the offensive zone. And I think you know where this one's headed. Alex Vlasic, he's going to be potting the winner here. And the Toronto Maple Leafs are following in the first round, a phrase they've heard way too many times. I told you Toronto wasn't clutch. I knew this was going to happen. For some reason in all of these videos, when Toronto just needs to win a single game, this team never can. They always lose in the first round round no matter what. And it's actually pretty fitting for this team. So Austin Matthews, welcome to the Chicago Blackhawks. You're teaming up with Connor Bedard. With another second round matchup set, it's time to move on to our next matchup. And again, the Islanders taking on the Columbus Blue Jackets. About halfway into the game, the Islanders are bringing the puck into the offensive zone. Roman Polak's going to be entering as the trailer. He's going to get the puck and no one's going to pick this man up. So he's going to snipe it past the goaltender to give the Islanders the win. So with that win from the Islanders, they're going to be adding another playmaker to play alongside Matt Barzell. And that's going to be Johnny Hockey at an 89 overall. He'll be a nice addition to the forward core here. Our next matchup is going to be featuring a clear favorite and of course that's going to be the Tampa Bay Lightning as they're taking on the Arizona Coyotes. But at the end of the day, anyone can come out on top in these matchups. Tampa's doing a terrific job breaking the puck out of their own zone and then some nice passing is going to find Brandon Hagel. He's going to throw the puck towards the net and that's going to lead to a juicy rebound which he's going to bury and Tampa's taking this one home. Tampa taking down Arizona really wasn't much of a surprise to anyone and Clayton Keller now you're a part of the Tampa Bay Lightning organization. You're finally on a competent team. I know you're not used to that but you know what? I think you'll be able to adjust pretty quick. And speaking 
speaking of competent teams, we got the Carolina Hurricanes up in our next matchup, and they're going to be taking on the Montreal Canadiens. We're going to need more than one period for this game to get decided, and in the second period, Jordan Stahl, he's going to be sending a rocket right past Jake the Snake, and that means Carolina's going to be coming out on top in this game. After that rocket of a shot from Jordan Stahl, it looks like the Carolina Hurricanes are going to be taking this one, and on top of that, they're also going to be adding Nick Suzuki to the team. Heading into our next matchup, this is going to be a more evenly matched one, as we're going to see the New York Rangers taking on the Minnesota Wild. With eight minutes left in the first period, Minnesota's putting some solid pressure on the Rangers' defense. A loose puck's going to be secured behind the net for Joel Eric's neck. He's going to circle around, and no one's going to put a ton of pressure on him, so he's going to rip it past Shesterkin to take this game. This new addition for the Minnesota Wild is going to be absolutely massive, because now you have Artemi Pernier and Kirill Kaprizov playing on the same line together. And if you're not seeing success with those two guys together, then I don't know what's going on here. We're going to be having another matchup that's fairly evenly matched, and that's going to be the Nashville Predators and Los Angeles Kings. Now, this Nashville and LA game probably should have ended about five minutes into the first period but both of these goaltenders were standing on their heads however eventually someone's going to be able to find the back of the net and that's going to be Tyson Berry as he's going to be ripping it home with the full pressure bar all maxed out. Tyson Berry great work on allowing Nashville to advance to the second round with your lone goal and you know what your reward is for that? Falling to the second defensive pairing because we got Drew Doughty on the team now. Sorry about that one bud. So this next matchup right here honestly it's just a waste of time for all of us of course we already know the St. Louis Blues are going to be advancing but you know what let's humor ourselves here and let's watch the matchup just in case something stupid happens. Now I'm not gonna lie to y'all, if we lost to Alexander Ovechkin, he sniped one home, I'd be okay with that. But we're losing to Matthew Phillips. I mean, Phillips has shown a ton of potential in the AHL. He's absolutely dominated, so I'm looking forward to see what he can do now that he's been given an opportunity. Now, so I'm going to keep the thousand with y'all. Not really too sure how this happened, but you know what? It happened, and we're going to have to send Jordan Cairo over to the Washington Capitals. And yeah, I can't really process what happened. We really lost to the Washington Capitals. It's a tough look. But there's no point in me sitting here in absolute misery, so let's move on to our next matchup. And we've got the Florida Panthers taking on the San Jose Sharks. With San Jose on the power play and the second period coming to an end, they don't really have too much time left here. But it looks like they're going to get a great opportunity where Barbarov bring the puck into the zone. He's going to send it over to Hoffman and with a quick flick of the wrist, he's going to get it past Barbrowski and San Jose's completing the upset. The San Jose Sharks taking down the Florida Panthers is definitely one of the biggest upsets we've seen in the video so far, but something about Matthew Kachuk in a San Jose Sharks uniform just doesn't sit right with me. I don't know, something about this just doesn't look right. So we're down to our final three matchups of the first round. This winner is going to take on San Jose and that's between the Vancouver Canucks and Pittsburgh Penguins. Halfway through the first period, Vancouver's going to be getting a fantastic opportunity due to some nice passes and Dakota Joshua, he's going to bury this one in the back of the net and Vancouver's advancing. So I think it's pretty clear why Dakota Joshua is going to be the guy scoring this goal. It's because he had to get back for the St. Louis Blues. A former St. Louis legend. I don't even know why I'm calling him a legend. I think he had like three points for us. He got into a few fights. That's all I know. He won a couple fights. But he's going to be picking up a goal here. Eliminating the Pittsburgh Penguins. And that means Cindy Crosby's joined the Vancouver Canucks. But we finally get to take a look at a team that's been a complete disappointment since the season began. The Edmonton Oilers. What are y'all doing? Like have you ever heard of defense? Because it sounds and looks like you definitely have happen. With the Dallas Stars on the power play here, I think we all know what's about to happen. They're going to turn the puck over. Ryan McLeod's going to get himself a breakaway and he's going to score the shorthanded winner. Once Dallas got that power play, I thought this game was all over. And it technically was, but Ryan McLeod's going to be picking up that shorthanded goal and now you're picking up Jason Robertson at 92 overall. So that's going to be a nice addition to the team. But we're finally down to our last matchup, the first round, and that's going to feature the Calgary Flames taking on the Vegas Golden Knights, the number two team in the lead, taking on the 31st in the Calgary Flames. No clue how they finished second last, but here here they are. Now let's finish this first round with a fantastic matchup. Vegas has been controlling this game from start to finish and now it's time for somebody to end it and it looks like that's going to be Mark Stone as he sets himself up in the slot and he's ripping this one home. The real MVP from this Calgary and Vegas game is Jacob Markstrom because y'all do not understand how much work this man was putting in. By the time that first goal was scored, probably should have been about 5 nothing for Vegas. But Jacob Markstrom, he kept them in this game and he held up his end of the bargain. So it's about time we head into our second round of matchups and we're going to see the New Jersey Devils taking on the Seattle Kraken. Exactly halfway into this one, New Jersey's going to be winning the face off in the offensive zone. And when you have the full pressure bar all maxed out, it's not too difficult to score a goal here. And that's exactly what Dougie Hamilton's going to do. On top of winning that second round matchup and advancing, New Jersey's going to be adding two new players to the team. It's going to be Seattle's best forward and best defenseman. And that's what all teams are going to be getting for winning second round matchups. And the first player they're going to be adding is 87 overall Vince Dunn. I really miss you in St. Louis, my guy. It's looking tough right now. While the other additions adding some more offensive firepower, and that's going to be Jerry McCann. Heading into 
into our next matchup, we have the eight seeded Winnipeg Jets taking on the ninth seeded Buffalo Sabres. So it's safe to say these two teams match up pretty well against each other. The Winnipeg Jets are going to begin to power play early on in this game. When I say early on, literally somebody took a penalty 30 seconds into this one, and that's going to be pretty costly for them because the guy they just picked up in David Pasternak is going to be scoring the winner. After the Winnipeg Jets were able to beat the Boston Bruins, I told y'all David Pasternak was going to be a fantastic pickup, and here he is scoring the goal that's going to allow them to advance to the third round. And on top of advancing, they're also going to be adding Tage Thompson to the team, and they're getting a massive upgrade to the defensive core in Rasmus Dahlien. The Chicago Blackhawks were able to complete one upside, taking down the Toronto Maple Leafs, but I'm not too sure if they're going to be able to beat the Colorado Avalanche. So when this goal was first scored, I didn't even know what happened because I wasn't paying any attention whatsoever, but Taylor Hall is going to score 30 seconds into this one, and this game's over, and Chicago's advancing. And Chicago actually might be a wagon now because not only do they have Nathan McKinnon on the team now, but they're also going to be adding Kale McCarr, so 295 overalls. And we have to remember, Chicago also beat Toronto, so they have Austin Matthews. Austin Matthews, Nathan McKinnon, Kale McCarr. Those three guys are going to be able to steal you a game or two. Now, I'm not going to lie, I'm actually incredibly happy with Chicago winning that one just because they won it 34 seconds into the game and I didn't have to watch the CPU play that much. So the Tampa Bay Lightning and New York Islanders, y'all should try to do the exact same thing and end this one in the first minute. We might not be finding a winner in the first minute here, but we are going to get a pretty quick goal and that's going to be coming from the Tampa Bay Lightning as Victor Hedman's going to be sending this one into the back of the net. Tampa, I appreciate the heck out of y'all for ending this game early. The past two games have only taken like three minutes, so we're starting to get some momentum going. On uh, top of game momentum going, Adam Pellick, you're going to be joining the Tampa Bay Lightning and same with you, Matt Barzell. Tampa's got even stronger. They might be unstoppable. Then again, they got to take on the Chicago Blackhawks in the next round and Chicago's a wagon right now. We can't sleep on them. Before we get to that Chicago Tampa matchup though, we got a few more matchups in the second round and the next one's going to see the Carolina Hurricanes taking on the Minnesota Wild. Halfway through the first period, Carolina's just going to walk right into the offensive zone. Nobody's going to pick up Marty Natchez, even though there's two defenders there and he's going to send this one right past Phil Gustafson and this game's over. So as we know, the Carolina Hurricanes are going to be adding two new stars to their team. The first is going to be 92 overall Kirill Kaprizov, similar to David Pasternak in a challenge like this, this is a guy you want on your team. Meanwhile, adding a bit more support to the defensive end is going to be 87 overall Jared Spurgeon. We've had three pretty quick matchups and I want that trend to continue and hopefully it does in this next matchup as we have the Nashville Predators taking on the Washington Capitals. Nashville is going to be showing some absolutely elite playmaking here. Some great passing is going to find Novak on the doorstep. He's going to tap this one to the back of the net and just like that the Washington Capitals are eliminated. Novak's going to be holding it down for the Nashville Predators and now they're off to the Elite Eight but before they head there they better add two new players. The first is going to be Alexander Ovechkin at 91 overall. Well the next pickups can be adding some more defensive depth here and that's going to be John Carlson. We're down to our final two matchups in the second round and we got to figure out who's going to be advanced between the San Jose Sharks and Vancouver Canucks. Really I have no clue how Logan Couture is going to pick up the puck here from Anthony Duclair and nobody's going to put a body on him. There's like three or four defenders right here. Just push him off the puck, do something to put a bit of pressure on him. Seeing San Jose take down the Vancouver Canucks should definitely be considered an upset seeing as the day I'm recording this video this team is yet to win a game. Not like this team's actually cooked they might not win 10 games this season. It's not looking good over there, but now you got Elias Pedersen, you also got Quinn Hughes, so that should help a little bit. And we're down to our final matchup of the second round. That's going to feature the Edmonton Oilers taking on the Vegas Golden Knights. Edmonton doesn't have to worry about their offense. They're eventually going to be able to score a goal in this game. Keeping the puck out of their own net though, that's the real task for this team. And it looks like that's exactly what Edmonton's doing as they're going to be able to survive seven minutes without giving up a goal. And then Ryan Nugent Hopkins, he's going to be able to bury the winner. So Edmonton was able to keep the puck out of their own net. So they're going to be taking this matchup. And that means you're adding Jack Eichel to the team at 91 overall and you're getting some help defensively and that's going to be Shea Theodore at 89. So the second round's officially wrapped up and now we're on to the Elite Eight and our first matchup's going to feature the New Jersey Devils taking on the Winnipeg Jets. With time winding down in the first period here, I was expecting this game to go to intermission, but Vanacek's going to make a very risky poke check and that's not going to work out for him as Ehlers is going to be scoring the winner and the Winnipeg Jets are now off to the final four. So for the third round, I can add any three players regardless of position, but it can't be a goaltender. And the reason for that, in order to win this challenge, your goaltender needs to go five games in a row without giving up the first goal. And so far, how Buck's done that in three straight games, so he's got to keep it rolling. So as we can see, Jack Hughes, he's going to be the first new addition to the team. The Winnipeg Jets are also going to be getting a nice upgrade to their defense as they're bringing in 90 overall Dougie Hamilton. And if you thought the forward core wasn't getting enough upgrades here, well now you got Nico Heischer and that's going to upgrade your center depth even more. So Winnipeg's off to the final four and now we got to figure out who they're going to be taking on. Is it going to be the wagon in the Chicago Blackhawks or is it going to be the superior team in the Tampa Bay Lightning? At this point, I really don't have anything else to say about the Chicago Blackhawks other than and keep the wagon rolling. Ryan Denaro, he's going to be sniping one glove side on Vasilevsky. He's not going to be able to make the save here. And the Chicago Blackhawks are now off to the final four. Who would have thought we would be entering the final four teams and the Chicago Blackhawks would still be here? 
and really doesn't make any sense. But now the wagon continues to get stronger. Nikita Kucherov, welcome to the team. As we know, this Chicago team definitely needs a lot of defensive help, and now they're going to get 93 overall Victor Hedman to play alongside Kale McCarr. And we're not done there because the third player that's going to be added to the Chicago Blackhawks is going to be Braden Point. We're halfway through our third round matchups, and now we have a fantastic one to take in, and that's going to be the Carolina Hurricanes and Nashville Predators. With Nashville on the power play, Carolina's going to try to clear the puck from the zone, but they're not going to be able to. The defense was making a huge play, and the offense from Carolina is going to continue to put the pressure on before Freddie Anderson gets stuck on the ice, and Tomasino is going to be taking this one home for Nashville. The trend seems to be two forwards and one defenseman. We're going to continue that trend. 90 overall Sebastian Ajo, welcome to the Nashville Predators. And alongside Ajo, we're also going to be bringing Seshnikov to the team. Now, I could have went with Marty Natchez, but I decided not to because I think Nashville could use a bit more defensive help, so Jacob Slavin, welcome to the team. We could potentially have the wildest Final Four if the San Jose Sharks are able to win this matchup. Like, imagine the San Jose Sharks and Chicago Blackhawks being two of the Final Four teams, and then they could match up in the final against each other. I think that's a matchup we all want to see. Now, Edmonton, I'm going to be honest, the one team that you really shouldn't be concerned about is the San Jose Sharks, because you just took down the Vegas Golden Knights, but you're telling me you can't stop the San Jose Sharks from scoring against you. You could stop Vegas, but you can't stop the Sharks. So we got the Final Four that everyone wanted. The San Jose Sharks, the Chicago Blackhawks, Winnipeg Jets, and Nashville Predators. I think that's the outcome that everyone was expecting. But San Jose, they're getting some massive upgrades. Of course, Connor McDavid. You're also going to have Leon Dries. I mean, two massive pieces to the forward core. And on top of that, you're bringing in Matias Ekholm to help the defense. Because that definitely needs help. But I mean, you got Quinn Hughes here as well from beating Vancouver. You got some nice pieces here. Maybe San Jose can take down Nashville. I mean, that matchup could really go either way. I guess we'll have to wait and see. So as I said, we're down to our final four teams. And from here on out, the team you have right now is the team you're going to be finishing with. No more players are going to be added. And let's get right into our first matchup. The Winnipeg Jets taking on the absolute wagon in the Chicago Blackhawks. And by some miracle, it looks like the wagon's going to keep on rolling here. Like it literally makes zero sense. And who's going to be scoring the goal to send this team to the final? Connor Bedard out of all players on this team. Now at this point, I'm starting to think this is rigged. Now, if you told me at the beginning of this video, the Chicago Blackhawks would be entering the final, meaning they've gone four straight matchups without allowing the first goal of the game, I wouldn't have believed you because that's not possible but here we are and there is a potential for the greatest matchup of all time we need san jose to win here a san jose chicago final that would be fantastic so it's actually going to happen i didn't think it would be possible matthew kachuk he's going to be scoring the game winner here for the san jose sharks and that means our final is the chicago blackhawks taking on the san jose sharks it actually happened well here we are in the final game of this challenge we've gone through the entire bracket and we're down to two teams the chicago blackhawks and san jose sharks the 26th seed taken on the 21st. Both of these teams are headed into their fifth matchup and they haven't allowed the first goal of the game yet. Both of their goaltenders have been perfect. Yeah, that's right. Chicago's goaltending has been perfect and so is San Jose's. I know it makes zero sense, but we're going to keep on rolling here. And now we're about to find our winner. So in our final matchup featuring two of the best teams in the league, Connor Bedard is going to get sprung for a breakaway. And of course, he's going to be the guy ending this video. The Chicago Blackhawks are going to be winning the challenge. First team to score wins. And it's all because of this man right here, Connor Connor Bedard helping them get through back-to-back -back rounds, but also Peter Mrazek going five games straight without allowing a goal. What just happened here? Like, really, what happened?